Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And I'm back with another resin project. So, I'm really excited about this one. I mean, I love all of them. <laughs> Today, we're making cutting boards, which you already know because you clicked on the title, but still, let me have my moment, okay? So these are just inexpensive dollar store cutting boards because why would you buy really expensive ones to resin unless you were like, I don't know, a millionaire. I'm not. You do you. Oh, my little dog is carrying around her koala. I wish you guys could see it. Biddy, come here. Come here. Come here. She doesn't want to show you. She's shy. It's fine. Just imagine a Yorkie with a koala in its mouth. Okay, guys? It's adorable. So, back to the actual video. We are going to do two cutting boards today. We're going to do a rectangular one and a circular one so that we have a pair. I just like to display cutting boards in my kitchen, so I thought two different shapes would look really pretty against my backsplash. You prefer different size for actual cutting? Pick which one you like. So two cutting boards. Of course, you're going to need resin. You're going to need a respirator, goggles, and gloves, all your safety equipment. If you have a Yorkie and a koala, make sure she's locked up because she doesn't need to be around the resin. It's not safe for her or the koala. You also are going to need your colorants. For this piece, I used blush, white, rose gold glitter, copper, white with rose gold flakes, and interference violet. I had to add a, sec a sixth color because I just thought it would be pretty, y'all. And also, you didn't see that coming. Sneaky like that. I will leave a link down below for all of those. That's me, just silicone cups and stir sticks. Couldn't remember the word. And I think that's it. Of course, I use a baking tray with a silicone mat. And you can just use like a lid to some paint or something. Or you can use a silicone cup. But you need something to put your cutting board on so that the resin will drip off the sides. Doesn't really matter what it is as long as you don't mind it getting resined or it can be cleaned. Those are pretty much all the requirements. If you want the whole comprehensive list with the links, it's down below. Click on them, they'll take you to the products and you can make the stuff. Let's get started. Okay y'all, so we're gonna start by just putting down our baking tray with our silicone mat and a little pedestal. I'm using a plastic cup here. You can use a silicone cup. You just, you really want something to put your cutting board on so that the resin drips off the surface, okay? That's our main goal. So now we're gonna start pouring our resin on that upper part of the cutting board, starting with our more basic colors. So blush, the white, and the clear with the rose gold flakes. These are our kind of calmer colors, I guess. They're not as pigmented and they make a good base. There isn't a rhyme or reason to this. I'm just kind of going in, making swirling shapes, kind of geode inspired. So slices of a piece, not like entire chunks, I guess. Perfect. So now once you have your base down, go ahead and smooth it all out. You want to make sure that there aren't any parts where there isn't resin. And now you can go in with your more pigmented colors. So here is the rose gold glitter. And we're going to put this a few places in between the other colors. So kind of where the other colors meet in the seams. I find that just gives it a really cute little like vein kind of look. Like a vein of glitter running through. Perfect. So now we're going to let this sit for just a second and you can see the resin is kind of running towards the top and off the piece. I'm going to add a little more blush to that since that is falling off. Perfect. All right, so now we're just going to take our gloved hand. We're going to run it all along the edges so that the edges are fully covered. We don't want any dry spots there. And now we're pretty much done. So this is layer one. We're going to set it aside to dry and start on our rectangular cutting board. Make sure it's balanced, y'all, because um, this one isn't. It's the exact same process. So we're going to start layer one with the blush with our white. Perfect. 
we're just, oh, see, I told you it wasn't balanced. <laughs> it's all right. You just pick it up. But um, look how much of a mess that made up top. Make sure it's balanced. Okay, now white. <laughs> And the clear with the rose gold flakes. And we're just filling in all the spots. Perfect. I just love how that clear always pushes the other colors out of the way. But it also like blends the edges really pretty. It's just, it's ridiculous how it blends together. Now we've got a lot more spaces on this one where we need to kind of smooth the resin out, join it together so that it goes all the way across the piece. Perfect. And now we've got that copper. We're gonna do the copper first and the, then the rose gold glitter on this one. See if that makes, makes a difference. It really doesn't, it's just how you like it. And the rose gold glitter. I always do the copper and the rose gold glitter together. And as you can see, especially on these flat pieces, those colors spread out. So if you don't want them to spread out as much, you can just use your stir stick to kind of stripe it on in thinner segments. Pop all the bubbles with your heat gun. Once you've done that, make sure you smooth out all the edges. I'm wearing a lovely orange t-shirt. Sorry, I never wear good clothes to resin. You never know when you'll get them messed up. Perfect. All right, so this is actually layer two. You're going to let that first layer dry for at least um, five to six hours, and then you can come back with another layer. Same process. In this step, though, you want to make sure that your leaving bits of the first layer peeking through so that you're not just covering up the whole first layer. And a lot of these colors are transparent, so you'll still see the first layer through them, but you know, you want to you want to see the progress, you want to see the depth. So, make sure you leave space for that clear to go on and for that first layer to to shine through. Don't just put clear on top of clear, put clear on top of the other colors as well. All right, adding some more of that copper of the blush. Perfect. You can see that resin's moving a little bit. There we go. And you can see what I was talking about earlier. I'm using my stir stick to add this color on and the stripes are much thinner. So that's the difference between pouring and striping. Now use your, your heat gun, pop all the bubbles. Perfect. Now clean up any drips. I cannot believe I dripped on the wood portion. It happens, it'll be all right. Now we're gonna just smooth out the sides and then we'll let this sit. Once it's cured, dry and cured are two different things. It'll take about 24 hours to be dry to the touch, but you wanna wait at least seven days to be cured enough to do anything with food on this, okay? And if you're gonna be using food, make sure you use a food safe resin like this amazing clear cast. All right, I'm just cleaning up a little bit, but this baby is done. We'll cover it with cardboard to keep dust from getting inside, and we'll take a look at it when it's cured. I can't wait to show you. Okay, y'all, which one was your favorite? Round or rectangular? Because I know my favorite. It's not the round one. I like the round one fine, but I used the interference violet on this rectangular one. Can you see that? All this beautiful shimmer, that's the interference violet. I didn't use it on this piece. 
and it's pretty, but it's just not that like wabam. Pretty. Wabam. So this was actually a pretty quick and easy project. Probably if I was going to use these for actual cutting, I wouldn't come down so far with the resin. I actually only intended to do resin like on the top portion and then and then I just kept adding resin y'all I mean it happens but if I was actually going to be cutting on this which I don't think I will now because what well, I am um, I would just do the top mainly because your knife is going to leave marks in the resin like it's not steel it's resin so Keep that in mind if you're going to be using yours for cutting purposes and not decorative purposes. Leave room for your knife work. Other than that, they're beautiful. I hope you guys liked this project. If you did, leave me a like, leave me a comment, subscribe, do a dance, eat a donut. Bye y'all.